Hello, this is Terracon4, here to give you a basic introduction slash tutorial on the Pawn Swapper. Right off the bat, once you've added your project under Content, it'll be under the Pawn Swapper folder. You'll find the Maps folder, which will open up this map. Demo has various third-person art assets and stuff, and Blueprints is where the real meat of stuff is. Example has the various example pawns, controller, and other stuff, game mode. So the mainstay here is all going to be under the Blueprints. In this map, you'll find a basic simple step of how to use here, more detailed how to use here, and as opposed to that type of bullet point short numbered approach, you can go to the documentation link there or look online for the full written stuff. It'll be a bit more thorough than this and have pictures and video tutorial, which is what you should be listening to now. Basic setup of this is you can, using the player controller with a component inside of it, trigger a swap from one pawn to another. And you can have things like overlap volumes or other events in your levels or stuff that can also do this remotely. So, basic idea of what exactly this is. Um, first of all, player controllers. If you don't know what they are, they're basically everybody spawned with one of these when they first start a level. Normally you can adjust this by going into your game mode or world settings in your level. And here, like under game mode, you can expand this out and you'll get the default pawn and also the player controller class. Which in this case, we're using this example one as part of this example game mode. So this is how you adjust what player controller you start with. And so going forward, we will have in a look at this example player controller. Basically, it's just a normal player controller, but we added one component, and then we've just got some little events set up in order to swap a pawn, swap to a given pawn. We've also got some uh, st st bleh, stuff set up down here to forward some messages that other things might send to the player controller directly to the pawn swapper component. And here an example on how to cycle through different types of uh, pawns with a single button. So, as a basic example, we'll just create a fresh player controller and show you the basics of how to do this. Tutorial controller BP. In order to do this, you basically just add component on swapper BP compile. That's the basics of it. Go here, drag off, swap on. Or if you've got a list set up, swap on from list. And then say like tap one or whatever, keyboard event one. And this is basically all you'd really be doing. You just get your ref you add the pawn swapper component, get a reference to it, and from it you create the swap pawn or swap pawn from list nodes, and then you call it and you can tell it what pawn you want to swap to. Location offset is say one pawn is really big and their pivot point would be relatively high up in the air. If you swap out from the same location, giant dude might be clipping into the ground. So you'd say maybe if he's 150 units higher, add an offset of 150. That's more or less what location offsets are. You got a really short guy swapping from normal people. Suddenly he'd be floating in the air. You might add a negative. Simple as that. If you got a list, you'll have pre-input this stuff so it'll take care of all that automatically. Force update basically means if you've are if you're already using the same pawn class, it'll still uh, spawn the new one and destroy the old one. In most cases, you don't need that, but for a few, it might be useful. But this is basically all you need to do. If you want to set up a forwarding of messages, then you go up to class settings, pawn swapper blueprint interface, compile, and then after that, you can create your own event for say swap pawn from list or such. And then you get your reference to the pawn swapper component. Swap pawn from list. And then you could just forward those directly to it like this. So now from say, if anybody gets a references to say, get player controller or whatever, be it you're overlapping something or the level blueprint, whatever, they can just get a reference to the controller and easily send the swap pawn from list to force the player to be a different thing whenever they want. So that's the advantage of adding the BPI and stuff here on the player controller. But for the most part, all you really need is this. 
Again, examples of a little bit more on how to do stuff here, but it's very simple. Options are for the most part just you can enable or disable a debug mode and you can adjust the uh, spawn settings when it's spawning new stuff. Then say you wish to go and set up the ability to uh, save and load values using the pawn lists. The big advantage of pawn lists is you can save and load custom values for like health, inventories, whatever, anything you can assign a variable to and use that. If you can manually get and set those yourself, this will work for that. So you'd start off with, go to the pawn list, and basically just create new entries for each different pawns you want to have, and manually just give each one a name. Destroy if you don't need extra pawn inputs. Just say like, fat guy, or rocket guy, or whatever the heck you know your different pawns are. Doesn't really matter. Just create an entry for each of those, then go to the pawn saved values struct, and here you'll basically be creating different variables for all of the things you want to save. If you've got a inventory with some variable that you use to save that, create a version of that variable here. If you've got, you know, your health, stamina, custom skins, materials, whatever things you've got status effects on, anything you've got a variable that represents stuff as, you can save those here. Just create one of these, give it that rough name, and you'll lose, use this later on. So once you're done with that, get it save. And then go to the swappable pawns data table. This is the thing that actually has the real info. Basically, for each of these, you could click add to add a new row, or selecting one, you could click delete, I mean remove or duplicate or stuff. Basically, you'll select a row and you'll say at the beginning the pawn enum ID. From that list, here's each of those names you made. Select this, and this particular entry will now be assigned to that guy, that list name. Then pawn class, that's whatever the actual actor class is that you've already created, this is where you'll connect that. Then the location offset, we already basically covered that. Really big guys you might add need to add like plus 50, 20, 100. Really short guys maybe add like minus 20 or 30. Then default save struct values. This is basically when the pawn is first swapped to and there wasn't a previous instance of it, this is the default values that the uh, component will be sending to the new pawn. So default health, whatever, stamina, inventory, whatever you got, just set your defaults here. And then with this, save and you'll have your different entries for each of your different pawn versions. Like here we got pawn 2 with pawn 2. You set their name and you set the actor class. And with that, all your backend work is basically done. Then in order to actually hook up your pawns, I'll pop open here example pawn 1. You basically just, if you want to have the, uh, you don't need to do anything if you're just swapping pawns normally, but if you want to have the inventory saving and loading aspect, go to class settings, go here and you would add the pawn swapper BPI. We've already got that, so normally you just click it and it'd be here, and then you'd make sure you hit compile for anything to work. After you compile, after having added it, then you can go and create the event update pawn save values and stuff. We've already got one here. You can also create a notice right before it's destroyed slash despawned. And basically this is your um, loading of values. So your pawn, when it is swapped to and first spawned, right before the player has possessed it, you'll get it'll get this message if it has the blueprint interface set up. Current pawn values, you can drag off of that and break to effectively access all that stuff you set up. This is effectively the values that the last version of this same pawn class had, or if no previous one was had, whatever the defaults you set in the data table were. The last pawn values is for the previous pawn, the one that you effectively swapped to, swapped from. So say you were first doing a rocket guy and now you're doing a tank guy, you swap to the tank guy. This here would be the previous or default values for a tank guy, while this one would be the values from that previous rocket guy. So say you've got three characters and you want them all to share inventory, you could access the inventory or whatever you saved from the last pawn values and use those on the new one. Or you've got three characters and all of them you want to have the same health, you could access that health from the last pawn values and use that to set your current health instead. So it gives you a little bit of options there. Then in order to actually save these values before you destroyed, again, once you've added the blueprint interface, you'd go down here to the left, Interfaces, Get Pawn Saved Values. This will now be showing up. In here, 
you'd basically just see this. Whatever pawn this one is, you'd want to set, hey, make sure that you know what particular pawn this one is saving its information as. Then take saved values, make, expand that out, and here you can effectively save all those different values for your guy. In this case, we've got a variable for, you know, our health or whatever, so we would save those. If you've got, again, your inventory, maybe you've got stuff on a component, you might drag out that component, then from there pull out the variable that handles that stuff and plug those in. So you got to manually connect in all the things that are being saved and manually connect in all the stuff that's being loaded and set those up. So you have to manually do that, but on the other hand, it's pretty open-ended, so you can, in theory, set up almost anything. So that's pretty much the basics of it. And it'll just fire this whenever you, this guy gets spawned, and it'll call this right before he gets destroyed. So save and load. And that's pretty much the basics of it. And while we're at it, might as well also... So basically, the idea is here, we've got this guy, and we swap to this guy. He, this one previously, when he, before he gets destroyed, he will be asked to submit or get his current values. So he'd submit those health values. This guy would be given his values from the last time he was spawned, or if not previously spawned, he'd be given his values that are default, but he'd also be told the values of that last character. So say we want to have consistent health across all four of these guys, we could set that up. And here we've got an example of a volume, which we walk over and this triggers it. Say you've got a level blueprint or anything else you might want to have, then the basic idea is just if you can get a reference to the character pawn or the player controller, whatever it may be, for an event in the level, you might just say get player controller if it's just a single player game. This will probably be all you need. And then swap pawn from list. If you didn't set up the blueprint interface on the uh, player controller so it will forward these messages, you could also take get component by class set this to the on swapper blueprint is valid and then effectively plug into that the swap on on list but uh as you can see hooking this up is a little bit more annoying to have to do something the extra couple nodes every time so just setting that up on the um player controller itself can save you a little bit of time but this is the basic example of all you now need to do to have something else externally tell the player controller, hey, swap to something else. So that's pretty much the basics. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Hope this helps. And until next time, have a pleasant and productive day, everybody. Till next time.